Guru Nation, welcome back to yet another stock review. This is a quick stock review. Uh, if you want to see the whole gang, including Dr. Al Jazeera, review this stock on the Clinical Research Circle, which is our other channel, just go down to the link below for the Clinical Research Circle. We are going to be covering that stock later on this week. I just wanted to do a quick preview for you guys on Oncolytics, symbol O-N-C-Y. We wrote an article on it here on Latinos in Clinical Research, and let's just see what is in store. Uh, really quickly, the market cap is just what I like, 157 million. I mean, that means it could move quickly. Uh, now, in the last few months, we're in April 2021, the last two months have been terrible, terrible for biotech. So if you look at the last month, okay, you'll see this thing go from 464 to 302. Maybe something to look into as always, I should say this is not financial advice. This is just to get you guys to go down the rabbit hole a little bit further. We're going to look at the company presentation as well, the company PowerPoint. That being said, incorporated in 1998, Oncolytics Biotech is a developmental stage biopharmaceutical company that focuses on the discovery and development of pharmaceutical products for treatment of cancer, specifically immuno-oncology. For those that know, that follow the space, this is a hotly contested space. By 2022, it's projected to be a $25 billion opportunity, immunotherapy, immunotherapy for cancer specifically, uh, where you where the drug itself doesn't target the tumor, but it targets the body's immune system. Uh, in the case of oncolytics, it turns tumors from cold to hot. Meaning, what does that mean? Well, in layman's terms, it means cold means it's a cancer tumor that the body's immune system does not recognize. Hot through the OV virus, which we're going to get into, turns the cold tumor hot so that the T cells can recognize it. So if you see their presentation, there's actually a lot of studies that they're participating in. And I like the business model because they're they're sharing the cost, at least some of the cost with uh, big pharma, big collaborators. So basically you got Pelario up, first in class IV delivered immuno-oncolytic virus, which we discussed, substantial competitive advantages over intratumorally administered competitors, uh, near doubling of Overall survival observed in HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer in a randomized phase two study. Uh, Pelario rep synergy with immune checkpoint inhibitors offers multi billion dollar market opportunity. Uh, the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor market is expected to to exceed 55 billion by 2025, despite as few as one in five patients responding to it. Uh, established collaborators, they are, this is what kind of why I like the, um, the roadmap going forward for the clinical development. They are sharing the cost with big pharma and obviously makes for a great potential acquisition partner with some good data. I mean, this is probably what may happen. Um, so basically IV, it's delivered through IV. Other immuno-oncolytic viruses require intratumoral, intratumoral administration, localized delivery, obviously with IV access, the cell patients take chemo as well. So it's, it's a easier delivery mechanism. This is the clinical studies leveraging collaborations with industry leaders. So they've got their uh, bracelet for breast cancer with Pfizer and Merck. They're fully enrolled in quarter four, 2021. So this is the phase two. It's going to be completely enrolled in 2021. Uh, then they've got another one with Roche and one with Insight. Um, phase two safety data is expected in the one with Insight at quarter four, 2021. Window of opportunity study they also doing gastro and uh, GI cancer study with Roche and with Merck and then multiple myeloma with the National Cancer Institute and Bristol Myers Squibb because the combination, these are all combination therapy. Immunotherapy requires another drug, another chemotherapy agent to be used with it. So the lead indication is the breast cancer. HR positive, HER2 negative, this primary opportunity. Standard of care, significant standard of care limitations. Currently approved therapies are unable to produce a meaningful survival advantage. There are a lot of companies in the immunotherapy space, but this one being that it's IV administered is the differentiating point. Not only that, but with all the studies that it has going on. I mean, for a hundred and 
30 million dollar market cap this is a lot of studies you got one two three four five six seven seven studies that we have right now and they are in phase two most of them are in phase two some are in phase one so for a small market cap company this is not a bad pipeline uh, triple negative breast cancer market is an additional opportunity clinical data suggests Pelario rep can increase the proportion of patients eligible for checkpoint inhibitor therapy. So again, turning the cold tumors hot uh, basically increases the number of patients eligible for checkpoint inhibitor therapy because only one in five are actually eligible for this because the tumors, the body doesn't recognize the tumors because they're not hot tumors. They're not inflamed. There's not T cells there. So this company, Oncolytics, with the Oncolytic virus, uh, that it has gets the T cells, gets the inflammation there so that the body's immune system can help with the combination therapy. Uh, basically, it makes more patients eligible for immunotherapy treatment. Polarip vastly improved the persistence and efficacy of CAR T cell therapy, leading to cures in murin solid tumors. Polarip synergistic effects with CAR T therapy appear to be specific and are not observed with other oncolytic virus. Polarirep has the potential to broaden the applicability of CAR T cells for solid tumors, pursuing a partnership strategy to further Polarirep's development as an enabling technology for CAR T cells and other immunotherapies beyond checkpoint inhibitors. Competitive advantage, Polarirep has ease of delivery, one hour IV infusion instead of specialized delivery, standard dose one millimeter, uh, so standard dose one milliliter as opposed to variable dose accesses both primary and metastatic disease and other oncolytic viruses, just the injected tumor. No change to standard practice, chemo suite administration, uh, standard precautions used for chemotherapy. Custom, the other viruses are, uh, you, you need respirators, cannot be handled in the chemo suite. They wanna expand the indications, financial and clinical support for other company sponsored and or investigator sponsored studies, support of breast cancer registration studies, as well as other potential registration opportunities, co-development study with Pfizer, strong intellectual property portfolio, 377 patents, including 40 US and 17 Canadian catalyst. Here's the catalyst. First half of 2021, the phase two for the second line pancreatic cancer study, final data, for the phase two study. Then they will initiate the phase two goblet study in GI in the first half of 2021. Second half of 2021, the AWARE breast cancer study, final biomarker data, complete enrollment in the bracelet one study, metastatic breast cancer in quarter four of 2021, uh, triple negative breast cancer study, uh, the phase two, that's gonna start in quarter four of 2021. And, uh, Anticipated catalysts and milestones, phase two, bracelet, uh, phase two bracelet cancer, metastatic breast cancer, interim safety update, and the final data for metastatic study, phase two breast cancer with Pfizer. And that's what we have. So all in all, an interesting company, a very small market cap in the immunotherapy space. We're going to be going in depth on the science behind this during the clinical research circle, but it seems like they have enough cash. It seems like they have a solid business strategy with partnering with Big Pharma, and it seems like they have a lot in the pipeline. So not financial advice. Look into it. Let me know what you think. Catch you all later. Bye-bye.